watching Saturday Night Live right now. That is what is happening. I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm here. I remember since I was a little kid in Pakistan, Saturday nights, my whole family would get together and watch Star Trek. We didn't get Saturday Night Live. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, I had a movie earlier this summer called The Big Sick. Um, people who don't know, The Big Sick is the true story of the first year of the relationship between my eventual wife and I. And my wife, uh, Emily, is a white American person. And <laughs> my parents wanted me to marry a Muslim Pakistani person, so things didn't quite go their way. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was the second person from my family to leave Pakistan and come to the West. I had an uncle decades before me who was going to Scotland. And the Nanjianis were very excited. And they were like, hey, remember the deal? Be good. And he was like, yeah, got it. And then he got to Scotland, fell in love with a white woman, married her. And the Nanjianis were like, never again. Let's regroup. Let's tighten this up. <laughs> and then for decades, nobody left. The next person who left was me 40 years later. I came to America, fell in love with a white woman, married her, and then made a movie about it, just to rub it in their face. <laughs> Nanjiani zero, white women too. <laughs> when I called my mom to tell her, she wasn't even upset. She was like, you know what? This time, shame on us. <laughs> the movie was well received, mostly. Uh, I read everything online, which don't do that. <laughs> I read a guy said, uh, I watched the whole movie, I just don't like race mixing. Yeah. Uh, first of all, nobody good ever uses the phrase race mixing. <laughs> Even if someone was like, I'm pro race mixing, I'd be like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> are you an undercover KKK dragon? <laughs> the other thing, why did you watch the whole movie? <laughs> Were you hoping for a twist at the end? Did you think at the end I'd rip off my mask? Like, ha ha, it's me, Chris Pine. I'm a white person. <laughs> the only thing we're mis mixing is frisbee and golf. <laughs> Let's go eat some ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my, my Twitter mentions were a little bit of a nightmare after the movie. A lot of people were like, go back to India, which I've never been to India. <laughs> Are you just hoping I have an awesome vacation soon? <laughs> Here's my fantasy. This is my fantasy. My fantasy is when someone's racist to me, I want danger to befall them immediately. <laughs> and then I want to rescue them just to see the confused look on their face. <laughs> like I want them to be like, go back to India. Ha <laughs> ha, wolves. <laughs> and then I fight off all the wolves. <laughs> and they're like, we were racist to you and you still saved us. And I go, that is the way of my people. <laughs> Islamophobia is really on the rise right now. You know, it never really went away, but it's really having a moment right now. <laughs> Islamophobia is kind of like will and grace, you know? Where... <laughs> It was huge a while ago, and then we thought it was gone and done, and now it's back and bigger than ever. Thursdays on NBC. <laughs> they make me say that. I saw a guy be like, um, of course all Muslims are sexist. The Quran says women can't drive. <sighs> yeah, pretty sure the Quran never said that. Because if the Quran had said women can't drive cars, 1,400 years ago, I would be at the mosque right now. <laughs> and so would all of you. Because that would mean the Quran predicted cars. If 1,400 years ago, the Quran was like, someday there will be a metallic box that will carry you wherever you want, and it will have four wheels, and you'd have to put gasoline in it and it'll have a little speedometer to tell you how fast you're going, and it'll have a Bluetooth connection, and women shouldn't drive it. <laughs> I will be like, I know two things for sure. <laughs> Islam is the only true religion, <laughs> and women shouldn't drive. <laughs> I 
I am so glad you laughed at that. Because <laughs> otherwise it sounds like I'm just giving a very divisive speech. <laughs> Islam is the only true religion. <laughs> Women shouldn't drive. <laughs> That'll definitely be the quote on the internet tomorrow. <laughs> Sikh people get attacked all the time for being Muslim. Spoiler alert, they're not. <laughs> But they're brown and they wear turbans, so people attack them for being Muslim, which must put them in such an awkward position, because they're like, I'm not Muslim. Not that you should attack Muslims, but if you're looking to attack Muslims, which you shouldn't, I'm not one. There is a Muslim right over there. Don't attack him, unless somebody's definitely getting attacked, in which case, get it right, which is wrong. <laughs> Which brings me to my problem with most racism. Here's my problem with most racism. It's the inaccuracy. That's what bugs me. And I'm like, do the research. Put in the work. You will see the benefits. I'll give you an example. If someone yells at me, go back to India, I'd be like, that guy's an idiot. But if someone was like, Go back to Pakistan, which was part of India until 1947 and is now home to the world's oldest salt mine. I would be like, that guy seems to know what he's talking about. I'll pack my bags. Just because you're racist doesn't mean you have to be ignorant. An informed racist is a better racist. We've got a great show for you tonight. Pink, Pink is here. Stick around, we will be right back.